Hello, it's my face again. So for these videos that I make, I spend a whole lot of time going through different websites that I find on like awards, dribble or whatever it might be to try to find cool interactions, try to find trends of things that are coming out. And one that I'm noticing a lot, just kind of like more and more over time is this tilt card effect, wherever you hover over a card like this, and it kind of like follows your mouse. So like up at the right corner, it's kind of like tilting back into the right, down at the left, goes that way. You also see these like 3D sometimes. So here's another example. Oh, that last website, by the way, was nathansmith.design. The second one is, I don't know how to say it, but you can read it right here. And this one has a 3D version. So it's both using 3D transforms. So like Z index uh, transforms as well as the tilt card effect to give you this 3D effect. And we're gonna be building something similar to that today. So here's my little example. I made it a lot more dramatic. I also added some spring easing because we're gonna be doing this with frame motion and I like the spring easing and frame motion and it has all these same effects. So obviously you would probably use your own kind of card, something that makes sense in the context of your app rather than this kind of little random card that I put together. We're gonna get to learn about a lot of cool frame or motion stuff. So like, let me just look over here. We're gonna be learning about uh, just using motion values with the use motion value hook. We're gonna be learning about use spring, which is another hook from frame or motion and use transform. Uh, so three hooks that I don't know that I've covered a whole lot, at least on this YouTube channel. And those are all gonna go into making this cool little hover animation. We don't need to spend any more time looking at this. Let's go ahead and just jump into some code and I'll stop wasting your time. Cool, so let's go ahead and write some code. Um, one thing I didn't mention, uh, I'm sure you might've seen it in the, the title at this point, but I'm using Tailwind CSS instead of normal CSS. I'll try to describe everything that I'm using here. Most of this tutorial is also gonna be on the actual tilt piece, not really the CSS piece. So you can either ignore this and just kind of use your own card or most of these should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of a call out there seeing as I didn't mention it originally. So I have my basic little setup here. I have two separate components. This top one is just kind of like, you could pretend like this is a page, like wherever it is, just somewhere that I can actually uh, mount my card within the page. All this is doing right now is essentially giving this a background gradient of this kind of like bluish purplish colors, just because it looks nice. A little bit of padding um, and then setting the text color and giving this a display of grid, height of center with full so that it can put everything in the middle of the screen just because it looks better than having everything up at the left of the screen because that looks stupid. I'm gonna collapse this because the majority of what we're gonna be doing is down in this tilt card component. And I'm just gonna step through, uh, I'm not gonna do this for everything, I'll actually you know, kind of write through most of the JavaScript, but for most of it actually just like the markup, I'm gonna kind of step through it and I'll just describe what's happening. Um, just so we can get through that a little bit faster in case there's you know a bunch of you guys that are hoping to just add this to a component that's on your own website instead of trying to copy all of exactly what I'm doing right here because that might not be as useful. So to start in my tilt card component here, I'm just gonna add the markup for this card. This outer div is just the first little piece here. And if we look back at my original example, I'll actually open this page. Um, just also a quick shout out, all of the code for this is free on my website. It'll be the top link in the description. And uh, so if you come from, this is where your landing page will be, you can go under components and then just click on cards over here on the left. And if you click on code, there'll be both normal JavaScript and TypeScript versions of all of this that you can just copy and drop directly in your code. No needing to like, you know, go into a GitHub repository and kind of dig around or anything. You can literally just grab it from there. Um, this is all obviously assuming that you have frame motion installed as well as us using some React icons, which is just another package, just npm install react dash icons and you'll have everything you need for that. But let's go ahead and write that markup now. So obviously copy it if you don't wanna watch this part or skip ahead, but here we go for actually writing it. So for our card itself, I just have this wrapping div. And I'm gonna add in the styles for this to start. So if I save that, we'll see that we just have kind of like this little opaque card here. This is pretty much exactly as simple as it looks like. So we just have a little bit of a background gradient here. And then I'm just setting a fixed width and height, giving it some rounded border. So that's just like a border radius and then giving this a position of relative because I'm gonna be using some absolute positioning on some of the elements inside of this element. So we need this to have a position of relative so that we can do that. I'm also gonna add a transform style of preserve 3D. This is because I'm gonna doing the, be doing some kind of like 3D transform. So we can see over here on my example, how it looks like everything is kind of like popping off of the page. That's using Z transforms. Like, you know, if you have your X axis like this, your Y axis like this, then your Z axis is like towards you and away from you. And in order for that to actually work, you need to make sure that any element that's wrapping something that has a Z transform has preserved 3D on it. Unfortunately, Tailwind, as far as I can tell, does not have a class for preserve 3D, which is kind of weird, but I'm just gonna use inline styles like this uh, just so that we can keep everything in one file. After that's added, we can actually go ahead and add some inner elements here. So we'll just start with this one. This is just another div. I can kind of delete this piece really quick so we can just see what's happening. 
uh, as far as just the styling. I'm giving this a position of absolute and an inset of four. So that's why it kind of looks like this little white card is inset a little bit from the outsides of this card. Then I'm placing content in the center because there's going to be some stuff inside of this. Also giving this a rounded uh, border radius as well as some background and a little bit of shadow. And then if I go back and add in those styles that I just had a second ago, I'm adding a transform style of Preserve 3D to this as well, because there's going to be some other elements inside of this, as well as translating it on the Z axis, which we can actually see what that looks like really quick. So if I just give this like a rotate, or actually maybe we're not going to want to do a rotate. We're probably going to want to do it up here. So inside of our transform, I can do like rotate x or something like that and then just give this like say 25 degrees why is this not doing what i want to do oh i'm being an idiot hold on one sec i don't want to add the rotate here i want to add it to the outer div i'm like sitting here not talking and i'm like why is this not doing what i want to do so actually i'm going to come up to my div up here and i'm going to add a uh, transform up here so we'll say transform rotate we'll try to rotate it on whatever axis and we'll just say 25 degrees and see and now it kind of looks like how it's like not flat like there's two layers this will change depending on your transform here so if i gave this say 175 pixels it's going to look like it's way further out right or if it's like say 25 pixels you can watch how that changes it looks like it's a lot closer now so that's just the idea of that i'm going to leave that at what did i have it 75 pixels we'll undo all of this stuff and that will be good for this piece and now we can go ahead and just wrap this up i'm going to add a couple more elements inside of this div starting with this mouse pointer icon that i'm just importing from react icons that just is giving it some kind of text size it's also giving it some transform say 75 pixels and giving it a margin of auto so that it sits in the middle of this card then finally, after that, I'm doing something very similar, but just with a paragraph tag and a little bit of text. So nothing fancy here. You should have something that looks something similar to this. And that is going to make for all of the markup for this component. Now, the first thing that we want to do is actually figure out where our mouse is relative to the card. So I want to add a event listener to this outside div. Essentially, how this is going to work is we're going to take some kind of percentage. So I want to be able to say like, okay, I'm at 0%, 0%, something like that up at the top left. And then as I move over to the right, that moves to, you know, 100%, 0%. And then as I move down to the bottom, 100%, 100%, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can transform those values into rotation values. So if I'm all the way up the top right, we can take those two values and say, okay, I want to rotate it on the y axis by x amount and i want to rotate it on the x axis by x amount but that's enough talking about it i think we can actually jump in and start writing this code so on my outside wrapping div here i want to add an on mouse move listener and i'm just gonna write a function for this so we'll just say like handle mouse move that should be fine and then we obviously need to actually define that so say const handle mouse move and this is going to take in an event as an argument anything any of these kind of like uh, handlers on your elements are going to pass in the event object as the parameter and we can actually just log that out so we'll start with like say console.log event.target and we should be able to now see whenever we mouse over this i can fix myself right here as i mouse over this we're getting our little uh div right here so that's exactly what we want what would be really nice to have though as opposed to just like this entire div is all of the numbers pertaining to the like the width of this div and like where this is actually positioned on the screen and the way that we can get that is on our event target any of these if you call dot bounding client rect so bounding client rectangle that's going to give you all of the data that you might need regarding the card and i spelled that incorrectly it's actually dot get bounding client rect let's try that again save clear my console and now move that around Cool, so that's exactly what we want. If I open up one of these, we should see what this actually passes us. The main things that we actually care about here are the top and left. So top is going to be the position of like the top of our card. Left is going to be the position of the left side of our card as it pertains to the client, so like as it pertains to the window here. And then the width and height are obviously just like the width and the height of the actual card itself. I'm gonna remove my console log here and I'm gonna add this to a variable instead of logging it out go like this we'll say we'll just say rect const rect is equal to get bound and client rect then we can actually start pulling some of these values off i'm going to just copy these over instead of trying to write these out and get around my microphone and type everything incorrectly uh, but the first two things that we're going to want here are just the width and the height of the rectangle which we saw on our logs a second ago and we can use these in tandem with a couple of other values that come off of our event object event.client x and event.client y to actually calculate where our mouse is relative to the card. So event.client x will be, let's actually just log these out. Let's do like console.log 
event dot client x. We can do the same for events dot client y. And now we should see as I move this around, we're getting some kind of numbers here. What these numbers represent is our mouse's position on the screen. So not useful because this isn't our mouse's position on this card. This is our mouse's position as it pertains to the top left corner of the screen. You'll see like as I get up to the top, that Y number gets really small, like it's getting down towards zero. As I go down, it kind of gets up. But we can actually use these in tandem, like I said a second ago, with our width and height to get the position of our mouse as it pertains to our card. And that will look something like this. So we'll just say our mouse's x position will be our event.client x minus rect uh, left. So that's the left side of the card. And then our mouse y will be event client y minus the rect top, which is the top side of the card. We can then console log these out as well. So we can kind of just track this all the way through. And I cannot type like I also said a second ago. Try that. Get the comma. We are our console here. And now as I get up towards the top left, we should see that this is getting very close to zero, zero. I guess it's probably not exactly zero, zero because of this little uh, radius here. But then as we get all the way over towards the right, we should see that one number gets pretty close to our full width. So like our mouse X is all the way at the right side. Then all the way down to the bottom, the mouse Y should be very close to its maximum value. And then all the way over the left, that number gets smaller. You get the idea here. So if we're all the way up at the top left, that's essentially zero, zero at the bottom right. That's full width, full height of the entire card. Now, the last thing that we want to do is to actually turn this into a percentage. So I don't just want to say, okay, I have, you know, X number of pixels, right? I want to be able to say I am 100% of the way across this on the X axis or Y axis or wherever we are in between. And to get that, all that we need to do is take one of these values and put it over the width. So for instance, for our X percentage, we'll just say our mouse is X position divided by the full width of the card, because that's essentially what this mouse X position is, right? Like all the way at the left, it's zero pixels over the full width. All the way at the right, it's the full width over the full width. Instead of continuing to talk, we'll just log that out as well. Whole lot of console log debugging going on here. So let's just see that. All the way over the left, very close to zero, zero. All the way over the right, very close to 1.0. Now, one thing that makes a little bit more sense to me um, you'll see why in just a minute, but as it pertains to the rotation, uh, when we actually transform this into a rotation is that instead of using zero to one, I like to do something like minus five or minus 0.5 to 0 0.5. So to get that, we can do something like minus 0 0.5. You can imagine this is a little bit more like this. You don't actually have to do this. If you remember your, your PEMDIS from high school, but uh, something like this to actually calculate our X percentage will actually give us a value between 0 0.5. Let me make this bigger. I just realized you might not be able to see that very well. But a value between close to minus uh, 0.5. There we go. Actually, minus 0.5. And all the way at the right, we're going to get our full 0 0.5. It just feels a little bit more even to me. It makes a little bit more sense in my head. Now, we can do the same thing for our Y percentage. So if I add a, another level down here, now we have both our X and Y. I can remove our console log. And we actually need to store this somewhere. Um, you can just store this in state. I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to teach you guys about uh, the use motion value hook. That is a hook that you're gonna get from frame or motion. And this is just a value that can essentially just like a single value, anything that's a uh, valid motion value, which is a whole bunch of those that you can find in the documents, uh, but essentially just a state hook for storing them. So I could do something like, we'll say const x is equal to use motion value. And the default for this will be zero because the lower bound is uh, 0.5 or minus 0.5 and the upper bound is 0.5, like positive 0.5. So in between those is zero. That will just look something like that. And then we wanna do the same thing for Y. Now, these are not gonna to return to you a set state similar to, you know, like your normal use state hook will, but to actually set that state, I mean, by that I mean you're not gonna do something like X and set x something along those lines what you're actually going to do instead is just call the set function directly on that object so if i go x dot set that's what i want to call and i can just call x percent like this then we want to do the same with y so y dot set y percent like this and now we'll actually be storing our values in these hooks here. Now we should be able to actually just take these values and transform them into uh, using the use transform hook into some kind of rotation value. 
Uh, but one thing with that is it's not going to be particularly responsive. By that I mean like as quickly as you move your mouse around, it's as quick as it's going to tilt. And one other thing that we can do that's kind of cool is uh, add spring easing. So by that I mean like if I come back over and I look at our finished example, you'll see as I kind of like get up to one part of this uh, card, it kind of like overshoots it a little bit. And, you know, it feels like a spring. Like it feels like it's like spring loaded and it kind of like eases smoothly uh, into whatever position that we're, we're going for. And uh, this is super, super easy. So let me jump back over to our main version. And all that I'm gonna do is I need to take these X values and I need to run them through this use spring hook, which is also exported from Frame of Motion right here. So I'm gonna make another couple of variables down here. The first one I'll call mouse X spring. Set that equal to our, I think I copied it, our use spring hook and just pass it in X here. Now this can take a couple of different values. This can take either just a number directly or it can take any type of motion value. So for our case, because we're using a number, we actually could just use use states here, um, but this is gonna work just the same using a number like this. And then again, we can do the same thing for Y, um, but all of that just to say if any other motion value, so for instance, like RGB values or something like that, would work uh, the same or like hex values like you could pass in uh, one hex value and then change it to something else using use spring and it will actually give you the spring easing between those two values how we can think about this actually working though is uh you know if i were to start this at zero and then pretend that this x value were to be updated down here like in our x percent set to something like 0.5 if we weren't passing this through use spring, it's going to be kind of like an, an immediate transformation, right? Like it's gonna go from zero directly to 0 0.5. Running it through this use spring hook is going to give us kind of that gradual easing. So it's gonna start at zero and then maybe goes to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5. And it's also gonna overshoot it a little bit, pretend like to 0.6 and then maybe to 0.4 and then finally it'll rest at that final value. So that's all that we're really trying to do here. But now we're still really not in a perfect state yet because now we need to, we, we still have just like a value between negative 0.5 and 0.5. And we need to turn these into values that are useful. And the way that we can use do that is using this use transform hook. So three hooks in one video, you're welcome. And what this use transform does is, uh, I'll just start writing this and I'll tell you kind of one value at a time. So we'll define our first value as say rotate X set that equal to use transform. And it's going to take in one motion value. So for instance, say uh, our spring Y actually for this version. So for our rotate X, I'll explain why in a minute. So it's gonna take in any motion value for this first input. And it's going to let you map any of the values that you expect this input to be to another set of values. That's a little bit confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. So as we've, I've said 75 times now, our lower bound value is minus, uh, oops, minus 0 0.5, and our upper bound value is 0 0.5, so something like that. So that we'll define these just in an array like this. And our outputs that we want are to be some kind of rotation value. So I wanna rotate this on the X axis. So let's just say for our lower bound, we wanna rotate this by, I think 17 and a half degrees is what I did last time, 17 and a half degrees up to say minus 17 and a half degrees. So based on this value, which this value can be anywhere between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, I want to match that equivalent value. So all the way at the left to 17 and a half degrees, all the way at the right to minus 17 and a half degrees. If it's at zero, this should equal zero degrees because that's right between minus 17 and a half and 17 and a half. And then anywhere in between, so at 0 0.25, that will map to whatever that is, we don't do public math. We can actually apply just this one value so we can see it working. I do not think I need this console anymore. And to do that, we're gonna to need to turn our outer div here, I'm just gonna collapse this into a motion.div. So right before our div, motion dot. And now we can actually pass in motion values into this output here, like our rotate X. So if I drop that right here, actually give it a comma. Now we should be able to see as I hover this, so as I get down towards the bottom, it's rotating all the way down and up and down and up. One thing I kind of glossed over a little bit that's worth explaining is kind of these two lines right here. This might seem a little bit confusing why I'm doing rotate X, but then passing in our mouse Y position. But if you just think about it for a little bit, this kind of makes sense, right? Because our X axis goes from left to right, while as our mouse's Y position is from bottom to top. So if I'm all the way up at the top, I'm actually not wanting to rotate on the Y axis, I'm wanting to rotate on the X axis, if that makes sense. And we're gonna do the exact opposite for 
the other axis. So if I move all the way to the left, I'm actually wanting to rotate on the Y axis uh, as opposed to our mouse's X position. Hopefully that clears that up a little bit. I know that's a little bit confusing for me, even though I've written this 10 times. All that said, just to get our rotate Y value, we're gonna do essentially the exact same thing. So we'll go rotate Y, and then we'll replace our mouse X, or what mouse Y with mouse X here. And I actually wanna do the opposite here. I wanna go from minus 17 and a half degrees to positive 17 and a half degrees. We can then take our value, drop it right under our rotate X, hit save, and now we have most of our animation. So now as I move around my card, we get our 3D transforms, the whole thing is rotating and it looks good, but our one problem is when I go like this. So my mouse is now left, and what you probably would expect this to do is actually center itself back, you know, something like this, which it's not doing right now. Um, and all that we're gonna have to do to do that is anytime the mouse leaves our element, we just wanna set our values back to their defaults, which are these zero, zero values. To actually do that, I'm just gonna copy paste my uh, on mouse move here. And instead of on mouse move, I wanna say on mouse leave. So anytime the mouse leaves, I wanna call some other function, which I will just call handle mouse leave. And this is gonna be very, very simple. So we'll just say cons handle mouse leave. This does not need to take in the event or anything. All that I wanna do here is set our values again to zero. So I'll say x dot set zero. And then I wanna do the same with y. So then I can say y dot set, oops, y dot set zero. Now if I go ahead and hover, see my cool tilt effect, beautiful. And then I leave my card, it should call that function and then set both of my values back to zero, zero, centering the card back where you would expect it to be centered. And that is everything that you need to know for this effect. Obviously, this is a super dramatic kind of tilt effect when compared to some of the other ones that you might have seen before. So play with these values to find what works for you. You know, maybe instead of 17 and a half degrees, maybe you want to do something more like seven and a half degrees. We can go ahead and see what that looks like. Be like that. Give that a shot. Yeah, so a little bit more subtle. Honestly, with interactions like this, I find that more the more subtle, uh, often the better it looks like. It doesn't need to be super flashy and all over the place to be super impressive. Something like this, if you were just to hover past and, and uh, mouse your, or, or mouse your, your <laughs> mouse cursor over it, uh, it's going to look really, really good. I'll give this one last call out before I stop that all this code is available for free on my website, hover.dev, to show you one more time. You can go from here, click CL components, go down to cards, and it should, if you're watching this at any point in the uh, near future be the very top card. This is marked as free, click code, grab it. If you like TypeScript, go ahead and grab that. There are a whole bunch of other components that I'm gonna plug on here. This is my website. This is uh, my main side project that I've been working on for the last handful of months. So if you wanna learn about other cool animations and interactions, come on and check this out. A bunch of it's free, some of it's paid. It's not a subscription or anything. It's actually just a one-time fee of $37 and you'll get access to the component library uh, forever. And there's more and more components being added every single day. Beyond that, I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys next time. Peace.